welcome to the session on beam elements of our course finite element methods for beginners so in this session we will discuss uh, element equation for beam traction load both type one is uh, uniformly distributed load another is triangular load so let us uh, begin our session so we will try to write down the system equation for beam element and system equation in general for any finite element stress analysis is written as this for eth element we can write here this is for eth element eth element and eth element <coughs> this force component can have uh, the different uh, types it can be point load fp vector it can be traction load it can be thermal load body force and so on so forth but we will be only focusing on point load and traction force in this the stiffness matrix for a beam element is written as for eth element as e i over l e q that is equal to 12 this is the stiffness matrix we can multiply this stiffness matrix to form a element stiffness equation that is w1 theta 1 because we know that uh, in case of beam we can calculate either deflection or slope it means two degrees of freedom at every node and deflection w2 and theta 2 this will be equal to the force corresponding forces <coughs> we call it as r1 1 so let us ignore this for eth element m1 r2 m2 so these are at node number 2 so it means our element is to be representing a, a beam will have the forces like this r1 and r2 for eth element if you want to represent e eth element we can write down e and then we have this moment at node number 1 and node number 2 and 1 for eth element this is the positive sense and we will be having the nodal variables omega 2 theta 2 and omega 1 theta 1 so this is the general matrix a general element for a beam so now we can take a very simple problem to represent now let us take a simple problem to apply the concept of fem to find out or analyzing a cantilever so in this case uh, let us say this is node number one this is node number two because even if we would have any other load hairs then in that case we would have taken some node here as well so as there is no load only load is acting at free end so only one element uh, will be sufficient for the analysis as we know from our basic concept that either uh, we have to take essentially a node when either material is changing or a load is there or some boundary condition is to be specified so now here we have boundary condition at node number 2 and load at node number 1 so we can apply uh, the element equation for this uh, load now let us first see what is the value of uh, w2 and theta2 here so w2 is 0 that is the prescribed value theta2 is also 0 and uh, r2 and m2 are unknowns and here this r1 is minus f and 
m1 is 0 because there is no load. So now we can apply these conditions here. So ei over l cube. Now I am not writing the e here. So 12 twice l square minus 6l 4l square multiplied by after substituting the values we get uh, minus sorry omega 1 here om theta 1 here and then it is 0 and 0 that is equal to minus f 0 r 2 and m 2 so this is my element equation now we can modify this element equation to get the modified element equation so it is ei over l cube so when i modify this these are columns so this is what we get after modification the column will be zero and this is minus one and here this is minus one so we got this equation 12 6 l e L E a habit of writing L E so it's L E is not going. So it is six L four L square zero zero minus twelve minus six L minus one zero six L twice L square zero minus one. Oh, sorry it has to be this symbol bracket so now here it is w1 theta1 r2 will come here and m2 will come here and this is equal to minus f we have to subtract the prescribed value multiplied by the corresponding uh, stiffness term so it will be 0 so it is 0 here it is 0 here it is 0 here it is 0 so now i can write down these equations four equations so it will give us let me use this a e i by l as k so i write here 12 k this first equation this multiplied by this plus 6 k l so this is to be multiplied by w1 this is to be multiplied by theta1 is equal to minus f and the second equation is 6 k l multiplied by w1 plus 4 k l square multiplied by theta1 is equal to 0 the third equation is minus 12 k multiplied by w1 plus sorry this is again minus let it let us remove it so minus 6 l e theta 1 and then it is minus 1 to be multiplied by r1 so it is minus r2 is equal to 0 similarly we have 6 l k here k will also come 6 k l omega 1 plus twice k l square theta 1 this is 0 this 0 multiplied by r2 and then it is minus m2 is equal to 0 so now we have four equations here and we have four unknowns what are those unknown this w1 theta 1 and r2 m2 so we if we simplify these we get the desired result of uh, w1 theta1 and uh, r2 and r1 r2 and m2 after simplification we can find out w2 theta2 r2 and m2 so the exercise of evaluating these four unknown is left to you you try this and now we will be proceed further so now let us uh, a beam which is subjected to some general type of load and these load may include the udl 
triangular load or some point load. Suppose this is the case when we consider a simply supported beam, it is subjected to some load. Let uh, this be W1 here, W2 here, and this be F1 and F2. So, for this particular case, how many elements we need to discretize this? So, this as we know, I have to have one element here because it is supported here. This is the change in the load, another element and node I have to take here, another node I have to take here, one node I have to take here, one node here at the place where the load is ending and one node at the point load and another node at the um, support. So in all we have one element, two element, three elements, fourth, fifth and sixth. So I will be needing minimum six elements. So to consider this where the UDL is there, this UDL is to be considered with some equivalent member and this load is taken as WL by 2, WL by 2, it means this W is the UDL, the load intensity on this uh, member and this moment when we replace this uh, UDL is WL square by 12 and this is minus WL square by 12. So for a traction loaded member, which, uh, for a traction load of UDL type, this load vector will be given by WL by 2, then it is WL square by 12, WL by 2, minus WL square by 12. Similarly, if we have to analyze this, I can replace this with some equivalent member after discretization, I get the same, same way, two loads and two moments and the values for this particular case for load is given by at node number 1, it is 3 WL by 20, where this W is the intensity here, the maximum value of load intensity, 3 WL by 20 and you know this this is uh, 3 wl by 20 is the load so this is the load reaction 3 wl by 20 and moment reaction is wl square by 30 and here it is 7 wl by 20 and here it is minus WL square by 20. So we can derive all these uh, expressions that we are writing straight away whether it is the element equation or the equivalence of the load but in this particular case in this particular course we are not touching the uh, mathematical steps too much involving mathematical steps but uh, we will be uh, uploading these lectures as well where we can evaluate how to find the different load components when we convert this system into the finite element uh, system. So here in if the load is not like this, if the load is in this way that it is maximum here and it is from maximum going downward. So if it is our first node, this is my node number two. In that case, I can replace this type of loading by this element where this value is 7 WL by 20 rather this value will both values will be replaced. It is 3 WL by 20 
it should be 20 here so it is not uh, 12 and this is minus uh, sorry not minus this is uh, the seven this minus will come here in this so it is minus wl minus wl square by 20 and here we have 3 wl square by 30 so this is how we can write uh, these uh, equations whenever such loading condition is applied so for so just to understand this in a better way if we consider a beam which is fixed at both hands and a, it is subjected to triangular load of this type maximum value is w and the length is l here and l here so now let us try to analyze this using finite element concept that we have just learned so because we know the equivalent system of the first half of the triangular triangular element or the second half of the triangular element so it is always better to have two elements in this case of this type so now we can have element number one like this this is my element number one so this i will write it as r11 r21 because this is my first element this is node number one node number two and here i will write it is m11 and here it is m21 now the second element will be like this we can write it like this r21 r22 for second element node number 2 node number 3 so it is r22 and here it is r32 so here i will write m Two, 2 and here I will write moment at node number 3 of element number 2. So this, this represents the um, element. Let me introduce uh, the theta and omega term as well. So that I will just skip for time being because we are interested to understand how to be how this load vector is to be written. Mm -hmm. So for element number one, the load vector is written like this. So here, this is first is 3WL by 20. Second component is WL square by 30. And third component is the seven oh sorry seven w l by twenty and fourth component is minus w l square by twenty assuming there is no uh, other moment or load if there is any other moment of point load they will be added after these so uh, the element Two will have this type of force vector it will have the first uh, is 7 wl by 20 and the next is minus wl square by 20 and next is 3 wl by 20 and 3 wl square by sorry wl square by 30 so this is how we can write these equations this is wl square by 30 like this 
so uh, now when we assemble these two this and this is fine so these will be added here so it means what will happen when i uh, assemble the load vectors at this point so assembly of these load vectors will be 6 into 1 load vector so it is w 3 w l by 20 plus the reaction of this so let it be if it is a so it will be additional that we are talking about r a then we have w l square by 30 plus the moment at this uh, support m a then we have the 7 w l by 20 plus 7 w l by 20 plus this 7 l w l by 20 will be 7 w l by 10 and there is no reactions here so it will not be any reaction will be added here so it is plus 0 nothing and the third is minus w l square by 2 and then it is to be added by minus w l square by 20 so it is minus w l square by 10 and plus 0 and then we add this 7 w l by 20 with this uh, oh sorry so this will remain as it is w l square by oh sorry this is 3 w l by 20 and w l square by 30 so this is how we can have the assembly of the load vector in such type of case so the thing that is remain is here it should be rb and plus here it should be mb because this load will this particular node is fixed here the boundary conditions will be specified so it bound, what are the boundary conditions for this we have w1 is 0 theta 1 is 0 theta w 3 is 0 and theta 3 is 0 so we have these three nodes so this is how we can uh, handle the traction load so we'll take one example in lisa as well and we upload one video in the maybe in the next week how to evaluate these and the stiffness matrix for beam as well as the stiffness matrix for um, the truss this so that's all for this session thank you all the viewers for attending this session thanks a lot